This all started with my love affair of food. Produce, ingredients, flavors, travel, and a book. Hoping one day I could follow in its footsteps, but exploring the footpath and doing my version of this legendary mission. This will be a culinary expedition on a budget. But like the book, I will not accept money or free travel without earning it. Tonight, on the Around the World, stop three on my six-country food trek lands me in the city of Mumbai, and I'm on a quest to learn the secret of Indian cuisine. There's something amazing about e eating with your fingers. I'll experience street food with the locals. So that's the VIP style, on a bonnet of a car. Learn how to cook idli. Garam garam wanapa, which means hot hot. And sell my version of Indian burgers on the train ride to Kolkata. Mumbai, India, a city rich in culture and controlled chaos shared by almost 12 million people. The city is famous as the heart of the Hindi language, Bollywood film industry, and as a reputation as the country's foodie capital. This is my first time here, but I don't expect to dive too deep into my budget. I do expect to be out of my league in a food universe, as I've never cooked Indian food before. I'm very excited. Tomorrow I'm getting uh... A cooking lesson. So I'm going to be an apprentice for the day. I just need to learn how to um, learn, need to learn a bit more about uh, Indian uh, cooking. Because um, my plan is to make some kind of food uh, to travel from Mumbai to Calcutta on the train. Here we have the Grand Market, which apparently you can find everything. Food, clothes, pots, pans, utensils. If I can buy all of that here today, that'd be fantastic. My apprenticeship of making the idli tomorrow, hopefully is gonna prep me to actually get some food on the train to sell and make a bit of cash. I'm shopping for ingredients and equipment to make idli tomorrow. Everything I buy here will be a gift in exchange for my cooking lesson. So, what is idli? Most commonly sold on street corners across Mumbai and eaten for breakfast. Idli is a nourishing rice paddy, almost bread-like. It's served with an aromatic, rich coconut sauce and a rustic tomato paste loaded with chili. So there's a shop that I've been to and I can buy my equipment, pots and pans and spoons and whatever I need. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Yeah. What's this for? Vegetable fry. Fantastic. Yeah. And what's this for? This is uh, rice. To cook rice. rice. Okay. And what's this for? Milk. Boil. To boil. Yeah. So you've got pans and pots and pots for all different things. I'm doing idli. This one. How are you? Thank you. See, inside water. So you put the water inside? Yeah. This is uh, and then, idli. And this one, you, you spoon the, the yeah. mixture inside? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. And then inside. three layers, ah. and then you steam? We steam. OK. I also need some container to keep the sauce inside. Container. Yeah. OK, I need two, uh, two uh, one. Thank you. Maybe a couple of spoons. Spoon, spoon, is this. OK, I think that's it. You do good price for me? Good price inside. Price good. Like like it's local, local, local. For, like, for like local people, yeah? <laughs> if you give me good price, I make you famous. Yeah. There's no register here. 15, 60, 80, 85. So about seventeen dollars. It's a bargain. I buy it all. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. Ten. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get uh, two coconut, please? Yeah, thank you. One of the main ingredients for one of the sauce for the idli is coconut base, or mainly coconut, and a bit of coriander as well. 50 rupees. Thank you very much. I don't know if you realize, but all those veg stalls are actually stacked up on top of each other. They've got all those ropes, so when they want to get in or out, they've got to swing like Tarzan. <laughs> what a great shop. I love the way they display their food. It's, it's respect, you know? If you look at the garlic, for example, they've got this small little clove of garlic, 
a little bit bigger, medium size, the old heads. And um, it's OK, you can go back to sleep. Huh? It's OK. It's funny, they're, they're waiting for their customers just lying down, and if there's no customer, they fall asleep. I'm doing two different sauces with the idli. One is tomato base, one is coconut and coriander base. So I might just buy some garlic. It's basically 200 rupees for a kilo of garlic. So I want 250 grams. 50, right? Boss man's got everything here for the idli sauce. Coriander, curry leaf, green chili, ginger. Thank you very much, thank you. Even the presentation of the tomatoes is beautiful. One kg. Tomato. Thank you. From here, from there, from down here, from down there. 30. Thank you. One kg of uh, rice for yeah. idli. Today. Yeah. And then one, one kilo, kilo of uh, lentils. Uh, mustard seeds, yeah, thank you. The black one, yeah. This one is hard one. The hot one? Yeah, yeah. 100 gram. 240. And 40. That's all I've got yeah. in my pocket. You're not getting any more. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, buddy. You. Stuck with everything I need to make elite tomorrow, I'm going to drop these things at my hotel and head to the other side of town. It's time to overindulge with my first taste of Indian street food. So um, I've been told about this street where it's very famous for its food. And there's a place who's been there for four generations. It's run by four brothers, and they're doing a recipe that you might know, the chicken tikka. But apparently, it's the best chicken tikka you can get in Mumbai. So I'm going to go and check it out myself and have a good feed. Today, I'm catching up with Always. He's one of the four brothers running this legendary eatery. This street is called Chocolate Gully. It describes the spirit of Bombay really well. You've got mixed people coming in to have a very, very good time. Your shop's famous. It's been there for a long time. How long? It has been there for around close to 75 years now. <laughs> Bade Mia was my grandfather. He started this business. My father and all of his brothers they worked really hard to get this place where it is right now. What's so good about your chicken tikka? The base thing is the meat. We source fresh meat every single day, at least twice. And the spice mix, of course, is a special yes, it's recipe. A well it's recipe. hidden in a, in a safe. <laughs> Nobody yes, knows. Nobody knows but the family. So do you mind if I jump in the kitchen so I can see what you do at least? I'd love you to. Please okay. be my guest. Brilliant. So basically, there's a big bowl of mints there with all the spices, and then they press it on a skewer to order, and then cook it on the coals over there. It smells delicious. Oh, big hands, big hands. OK. So the idea is I've got the meat here and make a little putty out of it and then just put it around this skewer and then make a little dance all around it. I'm not doing a great job here. I'm going to get sacked before the end of the night, I think. Good, OK? Good, good, good. OK. I think I'm getting slightly better. Tuck, 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 tuck. Yes? Yes, yes. You'll be fine. fine. Yes. So here, you put the meat on the stick, and there, it's been cooked. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you've realized, but that's mine, and that's his. And his are definitely much better. All right. Chicken, 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 la. This one doesn't listen. Chicken, chicken. Mutton, 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 or chicken, chicken. Ah, mutton, mutton. There's uh, the bread over there, which is rolled flat and cooked on like a wok that's been put upside down, and it only takes a few seconds to cook. It's unbelievable. So apparently, you don't have to queue here. All you have to do uh, is ask a waiter to 
choose what you want and then pay for it. Can I sh shik kebab? Chicken or mutton? Uh, one of each. One of each. Yeah. Yes, just give me five minutes, sir. Yes, will... five minutes. Yes. I've just ordered two kebabs, the chicken and the mutton, which uh, is a little bit stronger than the, than the lamb, but I love it. Is that nice? That's just for me. Woo! Apparently, there's a VIP table over there. So that's the VIP style on a bonnet of a car. So I'm gonna lay my little uh, menu here. So we've got the two little sauce that mix together, a bit of shallot and, and lime. We've got the chicken chick kebab, chicken tikka, the mutton uh, kebab as well. And then we've got two types of chicken. So a little degustation, just for me. Bon appétit. Mm. So moist, juicy, flavorsome, spicy in a lot of ways. It's a little hot as well. Very nice. This is the chicken tikka with a bit of shallots, squeeze of lime. Mm. Finger looking good. I can't believe where I am, to be honest with you. I'm in the middle of Mumbai, in one of the best streets eating some great food on a bonnet of a car. I'm happy. That's the reason I wanted to do this. Coming up, I visit a local family and learn how to make idli. I eat street food with a Bollywood star, and later, I sell burgers on my way to Calcutta. Late night, last night, and early morning this morning. Um, I've been very lucky today, I'm very excited. I've been invited to uh, the real India, the suburbs of India, uh, and this beautiful family, and they're gonna teach me one of those very famous breakfast dish that no one start the day without. This dish called idli, and uh, it's very healthy, nourishing, and beautiful. Uh, so I've been invited to this little family, and they wake up early in the morning to make it, to sell it. And uh, it's quite exciting, actually, to be told, you know, the, the true Indian food, really. It's fabulous. I think it's this way, a bit tight. All right. This is the neighborhood of Dalavi, smacked in the heart of Mumbai. Rich in tradition, 60% of the families living here have done so for more than 50 years. This area is its own ecosystem. People are inviting, and you feel it instantly on arrival. I'm here to visit a husband and wife couple for much needed intel on cooking Indian food. In exchange, I'll give them the ingredients and cooking equipment I bought yesterday at the market. This is their business, really, the, uh, a hole in the wall. That's where they cook their idli every morning, four o'clock they wake up, and uh, then they jump on the bike and go and sell them. Can I, um, can I try the idli? Thank you. So it's a little bit like, uh, like bread, I suppose, and quite filling, so you just... Woo! Spicy. <laughs> so the red sauce is, um, it's chilled. It's nice, it's not too crazy, but it's tomato base. And this one. Mmm. This is coconut base. And I can see some, um, some mustard seeds and some uh, curry leaf in there, which I've got all the ingredients for, so... I can see why they're having this for breakfast. It's, it's, um, it's quite filling and with all this beautiful sauce, it's really nice. So, you gonna teach me how to make? All right, so we're gonna make the white chutney first, the white sauce, which is a coconut base. We've got a fresh coconut that has been uh, basically chopped in very small pieces and soaked in water, so there's uh, a bit of water. It goes in straight in. Chili. <sighs> spicy, spicy. So the green chilies are going in with seeds in as well. 
Uh, garlic skin on. Beautiful, fragrant curry leaf. And then lentils. I think the lentils is pretty much uh, to thicken the whole sauce. Generous teaspoon of salt. Here we go. With all these fresh ingredients, it's broken down in a blender before water is added and blitzed to a thin sauce. Ready for the next step. It's very quick and easy, perfect for any small business. So what we've got here is to finish the sauce, we've got fried um, mustard seeds and curry leaves in oil. All right, all right, too thick, chef, too thick. Ah, OK, so now you've done all uh, the pending of the ingredients, then you get the right consistency. Can I try? I think mine's better than yours. <laughs> so I should have been here last night, really, because they need to make the dough uh, the night before, so then it just uh, ferments, I suppose. And I believe that it must have bleeds <coughs> the rice after it's been cooked and the lentils and perhaps a bit of water. I like this uh, butter. It, it seems to be really, really light and uh, moussey. Once the idli batter is cooked into all the molds, they are placed in an aluminium steamer for about 10 to 15 minutes. In the meantime, we'll make the simple tomato sauce. We start with curry leaves, four red chilies, garlic and mustard seeds, half a red onion, a big pinch of coriander, and then the hero, local tomatoes. Cooking it down, it starts to thicken up and the aroma is incredible. So it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, mixture of the ingredients in here. It's really smelling gorgeous. So all you need to do is, before we blitz it, is to uh, cool it down on, on the plate. With the ingredients cooled, it's back to the blender for a blitz. It's looking good. The consistency is paste-like. Time for a taste. Those people are usually making huge batches of it. So obviously, to change the, the grammage of the ingredients always sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense, I suppose. Well. <laughs> ah. This one is hotter than the last one. And it has got more uh, curry leaf flavor. It's really hot. It's supposed to be looking like this, not like this. So that's menu sauce, and that's their sauce. Sauce complete, the idlis are steamed and ready to go. A serving is typically two on a small plate. A good ladle of that coconut sauce, along with a generous dollop of chili. Yum. Well, as they say in India, bon appétit. Break with your fingers. Dip in the sauce. Good? <laughs> Not sure, huh? <laughs> I think they've been being very polite. It's, it's filling, it's tasty. Nandri, which means thank you. Mm. Coming up, I've got a street food date with a nosy expat. And later, I cook Indian burgers to sell on a train to Calcutta. I'm in Mumbai, and so far, I've eaten the classic chicken tikka and learned how to make idli. Time to share a meal with a familiar face. This is Pelavi, a Melbourne expat living in India and working as a Bollywood actress. When we catch up, it's always over food. She always shows me something different. So, do you come here often? Very often, Manu. <laughs> oh, why am I talking in an Indian accent all of a sudden? No, I can do this. So it's called Pani Puri. Pani Puri, that's right. Because that is a puri. Pani Puri are crispy bite-sized shells with a sweet and savory water option, topped with chickpeas or lentils. What you do is you go... <laughs> Make, yep, okay, so that is, that is your puri, and now we need to put pani in it. Okay. Pani means water. We've got two different uh, liquids there. Yes, so that's a sweet chutney. Sweet. 
and that's sour and a little bit tangy. Okay. All right. And, and you have to have one on the other, or you can you just, have both. You do them all together. I reckon. Okay. So what goes so in it? So that's some lentils over there. So it gives you a bit of something to chew on as well. A crunch, a crunch, a bit of uh, lentils. Oh, yeah, yeah. You put all up, Okay. It can meter, meter. Sweet is mita. Sweet. Mita. All right. Uh, so Cheers. Manu, manu, mita. Or mat, mita, manu. Mita, manu. <laughs> Cheers. In Cheers. one go. Uh, uh. Acha. Acha. Very acha. All right. Now, one tangy. You got to go to the mix. Yeah, right, let's do you the mix. You got to mix. A bit of sweet, a bit of tangy. And this is the best bit. Oh, of course. Mm. So yummy. Yum. Thank you. Ready? Cheers. I like the mix. On the money. Yeah. When you go to a street seller in India, you hear people saying, Baya, I want one pari puri, make it sweet. Baya, I want one yeah. puri, make it spicy. Right. So you just, they cater to your taste. Yeah, I think the two together, you get a bit of tang, a bit of sweet. It's the best thing to do. I, I like the best. All right, I can't do this. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh! What's wrong with you? That's all the, the joy of street food, is that it's messy. It's not just okay. the bunny puri. All right, did you enjoy it here? I love it. It's chaotic. It's a bit crazy, as you can yeah. see. Yeah, well, that's what I've noticed, yeah. yeah. But the, the food is... It's yeah. just coming more different. The irony is that when I'm in India, I miss Indian food the most because my mum's Indian cooking is the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've experienced my heritage in a better way than even my parents would have living in this crazy place. Next up is a dish called bell puri. This is made from spice puff rice, onions, chutney and vermicelli made from gram flour. I'm told it's very filling. Le pièce de résistance. La pièce de résistance. But I don't know really. Okay, so this is this is called bhel puri. Which, bhel puri. There's too much noise around here. It's India. It's, Manu, it's, it doesn't it's stop. It's Sydney. This is your spoon. You go in. It's very romantic, you know, if you're together like I know this. I'm blushing. <laughs> Obviously, I got the piece of coriander. It's nice and refreshing as well. This one's a really good. So sometimes when I'm on my way to set and I'm really hungry, I'll just stop at a roadside guy and get one of these and plow into it. Mm. What? Well, I've seen um, like a pani puri, but a, a big one like this. It's called a batura. But it's the same. It's the same basic composition and but the different. same frying, same same but different. Same same but different. <laughs> I'm allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, listen, people have been taking the Mickey and my French accent for 20 years. I really? Think... You don't have a French accent at uh. all. <laughs> so this is how they make the batura. The dough, which is made of flour and yogurt, is deep fried. Tossed in oil only for seconds, whilst it puffs up and balloons out like a pillow. A very delicious pillow. Is there any bread that exists around the world like this that expands? Well, I haven't been around the world quite yet, so I don't <laughs> know. But, but it's the first time that I see a uh, puff bread that big. We've got something very similar in French uh, cooking. It's like a crisp, but it's made of potato. So it's not so go. hard. You gotta go. Boom. Oh, there we go. There you go. All right. So the chickpeas made in a gravy and they've thrown some chutney on top. So I don't know if I'm gonna do this very elegantly, but. I think it's uh, just dig in, isn't it? Just put your fingers in and... Oh, it's hot, though. Yeah, careful. If it's too hot, no. don't do that. It's OK. There's something amazing about e eating with your fingers. It's I so good. I love eating with my fingers. So I don't good. know why, but it's, it's the next thing for me. So this is chola batura. And generally... Ch chola... Chola? Batura. Yeah, so the chola is the chickpea. Yeah. And chola is a very Punjabi word for chickpea. So it's a very Punjabi dish. On a Sunday afternoon, all the family comes over and it's a treat. Everyone sits around and has chola batura. Hot chilli. Oh. Hot chilli. Ready? Not the whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've got to be daring with food in life, I think. You know, change your mindset and... Uh, well, you're eating street food, that's pretty daring. Yeah, in India, with your fingers. Thank you so much, love. I'm really enjoying Thank this uh, little uh, 
A street food date. Street food date. Up next, I have a shot at cooking Indian potato burgers and then head on to discover the colors of Calcutta. I'm in Mumbai, the third stop on my around the world adventure. So far, I've had some crucial experience in a local kitchen. Time to branch out and cook Indian food for the first time in my chefing career. The reason why Phileas Fogg was able to go around the world in 80 days is the fact that the rail track from Mumbai to Calcutta was built. Now, I bought a ticket to get on that train, but I thought if I make some food, I'll be able to sell that food on that train and perhaps get my money back. India can be random at times, just like me using this cafe to cook this morning. I'm always amazed how generous people have been on my travels. Vada Pao. This is my tray of food that I'm going to sell on a train. Now, the recipe I'm doing is Vada Pao, which is a really traditional Mumbai recipe, which is translated to a potato burger. Now, it's a potato crushed with a lot of different spices, coriander, turmeric, curry leaves, mustard seeds, deep fried in a batter in a bun with a coriander sauce. And hopefully it's gonna be delicious and I'm gonna sell a lot of it. Vada pao. All right, let's get started on this potato bowl that I'm gonna have to deep fry. It's too hot here. Garlic, so that's my garlic, chilies. I think the Indians love the heat, so I'm gonna go for it. All right. You know what? I think I'm gonna go all the way. I don't know what I'm thinking about, but you need to go chili, I think. Ginger. Yeah, I've gotta tell you something. I've never thought one day I will be in Mumbai cooking Indian food for Indians, especially for a French man. I think this is probably my first, or actually my second, Indian recipe ever. Okay, so, um, where is the click, click, click? So I've got all my spices to find my potato now. Mustard seeds, coriander seeds, caraway seeds, turmeric powder. Curry leaf, just the leaf, not the stalk. Oh, the smell already, fabulous. Garlic, green chili, ginger. So basically, what we're doing here is to fry all the ingredients together so it makes a really beautiful beginning of the recipe. Oh, I wish we could have smelly vision, smelling the television. Before I did this recipe this morning, it's me. Sorry, kids. That's a case of beer. Sorry, Blair. Boiled potatoes. So all you have to do is you don't want to smash it too much. You want some texture into it. I've got 1.5 kilo potato here. Compared to the spice I've got, I'm probably going to do only half. To really mix it well together. Yeah. Seasoning, a bit of salt and fresh coriander. So they tell me, get rid of the spoon and use your hands. And then you've got a souvenir for a few days because your hand will stay yellow for a while. Squeeze it a bit so all the potato starch starts to come out of it and it starts sticking together. So we need to make a simple butter. Chickpea flour, turmeric, baking soda. So just I need to add water. It needs to be like a, quite a, a thick batter, so... I'm really running out of time, so I got the chef to do the potato balls for me while I'm doing the batter. This is a quite a simple batter anyway. It's just a bit of water with a chickpea flour, so that to make it rise, and a little bit of turmeric for color. Butter's down, I need to finish those potato bowls. 
Thank you, guys. All right. So I've been told a little bit of oil on your palm of your hand so the potatoes don't stick to, you, to it. And all you need to do, I think the art of this recipe is getting the combination of the ingredients right. All the different spices and herbs. Let me try that. Mm. The curry leaf, the garlic, the, oh, the chili. All the spices in there are really beautiful, and that's not even fried yet. OK, all I've got to do from here is grab one of those potato balls and then dip it into the batter very slightly. And deep fried. Yeah! That butter, it's quite thick actually. But I'm so pleased with the result. Look at this. Jewels of Mumbai. I've got to be realistic about how much I can sell on a train. So I'm aiming to make about 20 of these deep fried potato burgers. But the butter's good. This is the last of my potato balls. What I love here is to have a little garnish of fried chili over the top of it. Just to blister them a bit, that's it. And you thought there was enough chili in the recipe? You are mistaken. With my delicious burgers fried and out of the way, it's time to create a simple finger licking sauce. Potato balls, bread, chili, spices, done, ready to rock. So open the loaf, a little bit of the sauce, a bit of the seasoning. Chili. Bon appétit. The, obviously, the bread is nice and soft. The outside is beautiful and crispy. But what I like about it is actually the spices in the potato, the mustard seeds, the curry leaf, the garlic, the chili, the ginger. All of this you can taste individually, but mixed together. It's an explosion of flavor. Coming up, selling burgers to the people of India, how hard can it be? And later, my first time in Calcutta, and I do it like the locals. Today, I'm leaving Mumbai for Calcutta. Jumping on the train should be easy enough, but selling my own take on Indian burgers to the locals, I'm not sure what to expect. This is CST station in Mumbai, which is pretty much a central station. This is Sandeep, my friend. He's going to get me into the station to buy my ticket. But he's also told me how to sell this beautiful wada pao. You need to say garam garam wada pao, which means hot, hot potato burgers. Let's go. I left my friend Sandeep to look after the food and my bag over there while I'm getting some money from the bank. Uh, it's about 1100 for air conditioning or 500 for non-air conditioning. 1100 is about 20 bucks, so I think I'll get for the aircon. Hello, sir. Uh, one ticket to Calcutta, please. Calcutta, yeah. Hara. Yeah. Uh, aircon, air conditioning. Okay. Aircon. Okay. Yeah. How much? No, sorry. There you go. I was queuing here. Push, push. Okay. Okay, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Air conditioned ticket to Calcutta, 28 hours. I'm heading to the big blue board to work out what platform my train will depart from. I really don't understand this ticket at all, actually. You told me to look on the blue board, and uh, so I've got our right there. That's 8:35. Bloody hell. Ara, yeah, 7.15, that's it, 18 this way. There's a few hundred people standing here at the platform and it's huge. The train is just about to arrive, but there's not only people here, there's also a lot of ingredients. I think this is seafood, 
going all the way from Mumbai to Calcutta. Amazing. Ready to sell some food. Very exciting. I think those trains are about 100 years old. This train is so long, I've, I'm not even sure where I'm going. Never been on a train like this before, but I'm ready to send my food. I'm gonna settle in. Garam, garam, what a pow. So some people are selling food on that train who works for the railway, and some people just jump on the train to make a bit of the money. Just like me, for example. I don't think it's, I don't think it's legal, but why not? Garam, garam, what a pow. Yeah, that's okay. rupee, you want? I think I'm I'm selling my first one already. Chutney, chutney? Yeah, yeah. Chili, chili? This one? Ten. That's rupee. My first ten rupees. Woo! Garam garam got a pow. Got a pow? Chutney, chutney, chili? Okay. Thank you, thank you. Garam garam what a pow. Garam garam what a pow. This rupiah, got a pow. One. I'm having a good time. I'm not sure I'm making money out of this, but you know what? It's fun, it's food, it's delicious, and the people are fantastic on this train. Pepper, pepper. Thank you. One for you. Woo! I'm selling. Oh, too much. Aye, aye. I'm being told how to do it here. Ah, the side. Ah, on the sides. I've just been told the chili on the side. Like this. Thank you. Thank you. You want one? I did not. I don't have to move from this cabin. Garam, garam, warapa. This gentleman just wolfed down one of those beautiful burgers. And you know what he just said to me? Can I have four more? Wrap them up, I'll take them home to my family. Is he kidding or what? Five. Okay, that's it. I'm selling out. I was going for a wonder to sell this, but actually can't move when people come to me. This is very typical. Mumbai dish. Last one. I can't believe I sold that. That was an extremely excellent experience. And you know what? India for me so far has been brilliant and people have seemed to enjoy it. So it puts a big smile on my face. It took me about 15 minutes to sell out my 24 burgers. Now all I have to do is to kick back for the next 28 hours on my way to Calcutta. Coming up, I arrive in Calcutta and wrap up my stay in India. Catching the train from Mumbai for 28 hours, I finally arrive in Calcutta. This is Howrah train station, the oldest station in India, having opened in 1854. If you think it looks hectic, you're absolutely right. It's literally a sea of people and really overwhelming. An estimated 2 million people use our station every day. I just need to find the exit and get in a cab. Well, the train journey was tough, but coming out of our station in Calcutta was even tougher. So now I'm here, I'm going to get on those beautiful cabs, and I'm going to visit Calcutta. Kolkata was Indian's capital under the British Raj from 1773 to 1911. Today it's known for its grand colonial architecture, art galleries and cultural festivals. It is India's second biggest city, home to over 4.5 million people. You know, it's not always about working to make money. Sometimes it's about discovering the people, discovering the country, and perhaps give back. So I'm at the flower market in Calcutta, and uh, I want to find out if there's a job that I can do just to help out. Come, buddy. This is Joy, a local, and he's going to show me around. 
this is the flower market of Malik Ghat. Some say it's Asia's largest wholesale market and has been operating for the past 125 years. With over 2,000 sellers arriving from 3 a.m. every day, they sell 80% of flowers purely for worship. In true Indian style, this market functions perfectly at a manic pace. You're probably wondering why Joy is wearing a scarf. Well, the scent from the flowers here is so intense. Locals either get used to it or they come prepared for it. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> so this is a car park, but a bike park. Basically, those bike text things in and out of the market from one entrance to the other, back and forth, back and forth. So without those guys, the market doesn't work. Do you push in? Show me how you do it. <laughs> All right, I'll do the next bike. This one. This bike transports anything from flowers to any kind of goods, and they're really heavy. One, two, three. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Next one. Joy. Yeah. How do those flowers come here? It comes from the surrounding places of Kolkata by a truck. And see this bridge? Yeah. Uh, the trucks are coming through this bridge, this way, this way, this way, no. and there it comes. Then it gets unloaded there, and after that, they are carrying it on their heads. And people come here for buying. Every day, every, every day. Every day, it's a daily routine. I mean, can you believe that's a job? Every day, you have to transport kilos and kilos of flour on your head. Can I, can I try? Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm going to give it a go, eh? Let's see. It's about 20 to 25 kilos. Like, imagine a big bag of potatoes. I'm going to protect my head. Ah. Are you feeling okay? It's good, it's good. The left. How Even many kilometers? 25. See you, see you later. All right. Okay, let's keep it here. Well, oh. you think this is a heavy or what? It's too much heavy. People are doing this every day. Every day. It's I day think day I've day. lost about five centimeters of my neck. It's less shrinking. All right, let's go. Carry. Let's we carry it like this now. Lending a hand at these markets has seriously built up my appetite. Street food has been at the forefront of my experience here in India, and it makes sense. It's simple, delicious, easy to access, and it fuels the people. Bon appétit. Apparently, there's a fish that's famous in Calcutta, and you can't leave Calcutta without trying it. Rui Pat. It's a, a specialty here in Calcutta, and there's a shop there I've been told to go to. This is a dish I was talking about. Rui ba, and it's actually considered a vegetarian dish, no meat whatsoever, a bit of fish, and this fish is from fresh water, so it's like a curry in some ways, served with cauliflower, a bit of potatoes that's been mixed with different spices, onion and a bit of coriander, and this a little dal or something very watery. And what they do here, obviously, is eat with their hands. So I'm gonna try that. So here we go, just a bit of fish. A bit of sauce, a bit of rice. Mm. I think it has better when you eat with your fingers. Mm. If you look behind me, it's packed. But it's packed every day like this. They must love this dish very much. And so do I. This is it. Unfortunately, my time in India is over. Now let's talk about money. How much have I spent here? The train plus the flight to Hong Kong, just about a thousand dollars. Accommodation, no freebie, about 650. But the highlight was the delicious food. I've only spent 50 dollars worth. So all up, 1700. So I'm halfway through my trip, three countries down, and I spent 
a little less than half my budget, but the few other countries I'm going to go to are a lot more expensive to live in. Let's go to Hong Kong.